Hello there, Brandon Ahmad here, bringing you an animated explanation of the inventory cycle counting process and the concepts. This is probably one of the most common processes that we enhance, set up reporting for, and customize on when doing our consulting and development. Here, we're going to be explaining the inventory counting process from a supply chain warehouse perspective with a focus on inventory cycle counting. You will learn what cycle counting is, and what it's used for. We'll then top it off by mentioning some pros and cons that come with implementing this system. So join us as we explore the fundamentals of cycle counting. So what is cycle counting? First, we must understand inventory counting as a whole. Inventory counting is a technique used by businesses to control inventory to keep track of their stock, assure that they can meet orders and prevent loss or shrinkage. This is a process that can be handled in several different ways. However, cycle counting is the area we want to focus on today. This involves businesses periodically counting groups of stock based on certain criteria rather than doing a mass stock check. Cyclical counting has a big advantage. Ideally, you will have an ERP or warehouse system, for example, like Dynamics 365 and many others, which keeps accurate records of inventory stock. However, many times, systems of record can become inaccurate. Say that inventory is not recorded for some reason due to human error. To validate that your inventory is accurate, a counting or auditing process must occur. There are different ways to carry out the counting processes, but the end result is always a validation of the system of record. Sometimes you literally count every item in a warehouse. This has the advantage of accuracy, but takes a lot of time and human labor. Sometimes you need to count a sample of the records in order to ensure that those match with the system. This is a lot faster and more practical. You can think of it as a spot check just to ensure that the system isn't out of order. Many companies do a mix of full counts and cycle counts with full counts scheduled less frequently to prevent disruptions to business, but cycle counts carried out more frequently to ensure accuracy of the system of record. So how do we go about implementing cycle counting? Well, now with an understanding of what inventory counting and cyclical counting is, you may be wondering, how can I use cyclical cycle counting within my business? We'd like to show you through a quick step-by-step -step guide. So here's our step-by-step -step guide to cyclical counting using, for example, Dynamics 365 or any other sort of inventory type of process or any sort of ERP process. First, you will need to consolidate and organize the inventory so it is prepped for this process. This is very similar to organizing a set of documents so that you can retrieve them faster. Second, after this, you will need to get rid of any obsolete, broken, or unsalvageable material because this is not valid inventory. Step three, next, you'll need to identify any critical spares. These are aspects that, if not working, will greatly disrupt your process. This is essentially finding weak points. Step four, now you will need to clear up all the data surrounding your inventory, making this new system easier to implement. Step five, after this, you will need to prioritize your stock. This is to assess what needs counting more than other assets for your inventory, with popular items being counted more frequently. So if you have a product that is frequently changing inventory levels with lots of activity, like a hot product selling or something, then it's wiser to prioritize that for your cycle counting process. Step six. Next, you will need to establish a cycle counting program that best fits your business. This is important because scheduling is everything and you do not want to impact business operations in any more than necessary while carrying out a cycle count, which usually involves freezing the activity on those inventory items during the process of the count. Step seven. Now you will need to identify and evaluate excess inventory and deal with it accordingly. If you find that your system is out of record or that you have too much inventory from your cycle count, you definitely want to adjust your system and figure out why. Common issues that we often fix, for example, include inaccurate master planning or inaccurate reporting, which can often lead to excess inventory. Step eight. Next step is to set up an inventory profile. This is to track the movement of items and help account for on-hand stock. For example, in Dynamics 365, we set up models where we determine costing and other important components for tracking information from a financial and physical perspective. Step nine, this is the point where you must assess and set investment and turnover goals. A good case of this would definitely be with your demand forecasting and your analytical databases. For example, 
We often set up inventory cubes where we compare the results over time with our goals so that we can tune our processes. Step 10. In tandem with this, the next step is to create effective action plans that will help you plan the events moving forward with this system. This is very critical and should be included in any inventory system of record. For example, often when we see a low selling, thoroughput, or rate, we look through reporting. We'll send alerts to sales and marketing. Companies will usually take quick action in response to the low sales so that, in, so that they do not get too much excess inventory. Step 11. The next step is to set up a follow-up mechanism that will check the progress and efficiency of the new system. No system is 100% free of human error. Mechanisms such as cycle counting and full counting are absolutely necessary. Step 12. When the system has been in effect for a period of time, evaluate the benefits of this change. This really comes down to your KPIs for measuring cost and benefits. One note, every company does not use the exact same set of KPIs. KPIs are dependent on competitive advantage for that industry and many are often proprietary. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of cyclical counting, for example. Here are some things to consider. For some of the pros, when you use the cyclical counting process, you will notice a tangible increase in the accuracy of your stock record, meaning less shrinkage or loss of stock. The chance of these events occurring is further lowered due to the constant counts rather than one mass count on an annual or biannual basis or quarterly. In addition to this, you will also be able to detect and remove any broken or defective stock from rotation. And also, thanks to the shorter counts, it will be easier to keep workers on track and productive throughout the entire process, something that would be much harder in a large scale annual count. With all these positives, you will be able to use this higher level of efficiency, productivity, and organization to drive sales and grow the business in other areas. Some of the cons. However, despite these positives, this method is not without its drawbacks. The first being that to implement this structure, you'll need to manage your stock accordingly meaning that there will be increased labor cost in the short term. Plus, thanks to the constant counting process, you'll need to timetable this much more frequently, which can have an effect on the daily routine of the business. Small warehouses may not benefit much from a cycle count and may find the cost not worth it versus a more frequent full count. Overall though, cyclical counting is a wonderful asset to any business looking to improve their efficiency as a whole, increase productivity during inventory checks, because this method, if used correctly, can take pressures off of an annual stock check and allow for the business to have much faster insight into the sales and revenue process of the business while looking at the levels of inventory. Thank you for watching this informative animated video covering the fundamentals of cyclical inventory counting. At Instructor Brandon, we aim to offer educational and informative videos accessible to all, so we hope that this was helpful to you. If you would like to find out more about how to improve your cycle counting process through reporting, customizations, or training, please contact us at help at instructorbrandon.com. Thank you for watching this video.